and you can make this live on YouTube as well. So my meeting is now streaming live on YouTube also. And there's absolutely nothing going on. What? Hey, Philip, how are you doing? Oh, man, how do I? Okay. Oh, am I like the only one here? No, I'm here. No. That's enough. Oh, man. No. No, it's still playing through through Zoom. Okay. Either way, how are you doing, Philip? I'm doing fine. I'm just tired because I woke up late again. Right. Uh, I mean, do you have stuff that you need to be doing that? you are waking up late to do? Um, I think I do. I just don't do it because I procrastinate way too hard. I mean, fair. How are you, how are you doing with the, uh, yeah, see, it's not quite working. Um, how are you doing with the ingenuity? I think it's all right. <laughs> That's cool. It, it's mainly just watching videos. Most of the time, so, like in the algebra two section, I just let the, I just let the thing run, and then after the video is over, I move on to the next thing so I can actually do problems, because that's what I'm really there for for ingenuity. I mean, fair. That's that's okay. Um, everybody safe and healthy and everything. Yeah. Been. <laughs> You said, you said uh, kind of, I mean, is everyone safe and healthy or no? Yeah, it's, well, I'm kind of worried about my mother because she's working at the hospital because that's mm -hmm. her job. Yeah. So she might be more susceptible. I mean, they, they're taking their precautions. You're, you're right to be, uh, you're right to be concerned, but I'm sure she's doing everything she needs to to stay safe. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, any questions about radioactivity okay um I I about anything really okay um let me think Like there is one question on the um, on the quiz, I suppose that's what it is, the checkpoint mm -hmm. that I kind of use process of elimination at. It was the why does nuclear reactions produce so much energy? Mm -hmm. I just um, I just did process of elimination for that one because I didn't really um, I kind of guessed on that one, but apparently okay. I got it right. okay. Why is so much energy? Uh, da, 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 da. Because I know it can't be extra heat is created because that doesn't sound right. Gravitational potential energy is high. I know that can't be right. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Electron spinning fast. 
don't they all spin at the same rate? Because I'm not so sure. Uh, they they do, but they spin in different directions. Yeah. Okay. Different directions, but same rate. Uh. Yeah. All right. Oh, Linda's here. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's a that's another that's another teacher. Mm -hmm. So apparently, it's energy mass equivalent formula. I have not seen that in ingenuity yet. So mm -hmm. I have no idea what it is. Okay, well, let's take a look. Energy mass equivalent. Okay, so states that mass is concentrated energy in the theory of special relativity. Okay, so when mass is converted into energy through, say, like uh, nuclear reactions, Linda, is that you, Linda Gross? Linda, is that you? No, that's my mom's name. It's Alec. Oh, hey, Alec. How you doing? Hey. All right. That's uh, because one of our one of the other teachers is named uh, is named Linda too. Uh, anyway, so you're familiar with the equation E equals mc squared, yeah? Yeah, I just heard of it. I don't even know what it means though. Well, I mean, okay, fair, but it's one of the uh, more famous equations out of Einstein's theory of relativity. And basically it just says that energy and mass are equivalent, that they, that mass is just concentrated energy, like it says. And if you could take a certain amount of mass and convert it entirely into energy, it would be that mass in kilograms multiplied by the speed of light squared. So in every single gram of mass, there is an insane amount of energy. Like that, that's essentially what it is. So anytime, like through radioactive decay or whatever, the, uh, the mass of an object becomes less and is converted into energy, then a whole lot of energy gets shot out. The, um, the C part of the equation constant because speed of light is constant, yep. I think. Yep. All right. But mass and energy aren't because energy depends on the mass, right? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So you have however much mass you have and then multiply it by the speed of light squared and that's how much energy you can get out of that one particular amount of mass. Or if you have a certain amount of energy, you can divide it by the speed of light squared and find out how much mass it would be if you could convert it that way. Can, can the mass part of the equation be any kind of mass? Like anything yeah. that has mass? Mm -hmm. oh. Mass in kilograms though. So why does gamma decay, like when gamma rays are emitted, why does it have energy loss? Mm, let's take a look at it. Uh, which, uh, which, you, which question are you looking at? It's the fourth one. It's the one of the which answers. Are, which, of the follow, which of these is not true for the types of radiation? Gamma ray, decay, gamma ray will not have an energy loss. Okay. I just saw an ingenuity video and it says, and it shows on a, on a chart, which shows energy loss, but I don't exactly know why. Um, okay. All right, let's take a look. Oh, well, Okay, which of these is not true? So gamma ray will have an energy loss. Yeah, that's that was. And, it, and it's because it interferes with the uh, with the atoms as it escapes. Let me let me look it up. Let's see. Uh, the rate of the decay is also slow when the energy of the excitation in the nucleus is immobile. Okay, because we're not actually allowed to uh, create our own stuff. So this is a little different than the stuff 
Uh, okay. Photon interacts, uh, interacts with and transfers energy to an atomic electron, causing the ejection of an electron to that atom. The kinetic energy of the resulting photon. Do, do, do. Okay. Uh, Oh, um, okay, so at the end of the positron's range, it combines with a free electron and the two annihilate. The entire mass of these two then is converted into two gamma photons of at least blank energy or higher according to the kinetic energy of the, the secondary electrons. Okay. Let's find this out. Okay, so the short answer is I don't have that answer on hand, but let's find it. Okay, so the question is which of these, okay, so alpha beta decay will result in new elements. Radiation is, in fact, everywhere. Uh, gamma decay does have an energy loss. Uh, Uh, most common. So how else have y'all been, what else have y'all been up to during this uh, time of isolation? I've just been speed running games, learning how to speed run games, or at least one game. Which, which game? Um, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Oh, okay. I've been, I've been trying to speed run it. So far, my best time is under an hour. Oh, that's cool. An internal pair production, excess energy is directly converted within the electromagnetic field of a nucleus into an electron and positron that are emitted together. Internal conversion always accompanies the predominant process of gamma emission to some extent. Some nuclei of a sample decay by gamma emission, others by internal conversion, internal pair production. I have been playing an insane, like a uh, un, an irresponsible amount of of uh, uh, League of Legends. Oh. Mm -hmm. I've also. Um... My friend who also goes to Jersey, he has his own YouTube channel, and yeah. he, and he sh and he streams Roblox like because of quarantine every day thus far. And I'm a moderator, so I just manage the chat, make sure it, nothing goes wrong there. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's good that you're staying sane. Uh, <laughs> so. So gamma decay does have energy loss. And it seems to be from the annihilation of virtual particles, uh, a positron and an electron, um, because, they're two, uh, because they're two different sides of the same thing. I don't actually have as much uh, access to the things that you guys are looking at. So it's hard for me to see exactly. And like you said, uh, how much energy loss? Gamma, okay, gamma decay. Do, do, do. Nucleus changes from higher energy state to a lower energy state through the emission of electromagnetic radiation. Da, da, da. Photons, the number of protons in the nucleus does not change, so the parent and the daughter atoms are the same chemical element. The gamma decay of a nucleus is the characteristic is divided only in two particles. Yeah, it. This seems like it's annihilation of virtual particles and recoil of the uh, the nucleus itself. I wouldn't bet my life on that, but <laughs> but uh, going through it quickly, that's what that's what it seemed like I was able to find. I, I wish I had a better answer for you on that one. That's okay. okay. I mean, the 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 oversimplified answer is there's always a little bit of energy loss no matter what you do. There's no perfect conversion. The tendency of the universe towards entropy. Yeah. Uh, 
just means that there's always some energy that isn't captured for the process. You know, there is no perfect conversion of matter into energy. You know, like when you burn a log, all that energy doesn't become heat. Yeah. You know, some of it becomes light and some of it becomes sound of the crackling fire and some of it gets left behind as ash, which has mass, uh, you know, so that that's the short and vastly oversimplified answer is that there's always some amount of energy loss. So like if we were to use the, um, the E equals MC squared equation for say the log, does it just shows the maximum energy possible? Yeah, that, that's just the maximum energy possible. It just doesn't show how much energy is actually going to happen. No, exactly. no, it's it's much harder to tell exactly how much is actually going to come out of there. Yeah. Uh, but that's why we have things. Do you remember from chemistry when uh, when y'all did experiments with calorimeters and stuff like that? Calorimeter. Where you would where you would burn a, like a Dorito chip and calculate how much uh, the temperature of the water went up or something. Oh, do you remember that? I don't remember. I don't remember my chemistry days. I only remember we did something with s'mores, and that's it. Oh, okay. And, and like, uh, I well, think one back time in the we, day, back in the day, they uh, that's how they used to calculate the energy in a uh, in a piece of food. They would burn it and see how much uh, a temperature of a certain known amount of water would go up, and that and they from that they could figure out roughly how many calories were in a uh, piece of food so uh yeah. so that that's what they used to do now we can calculate how much how much energy is stored in the bonds from math so now they do it with math but uh but yeah that's how they used to do it so e equals mc squared does tell you like the upper amount of all the energy you could pull out of something mm -hmm. And it's not like the energy disappears. Like if you were to burn and to be left behind with no ash, no nothing, that amount of energy would have gotten out. It's just not all of it would have made it out in any useful form. You know, the amount of entropy that increased in the universe might be so great that you still don't capture much of that energy, even though it all got changed into energy. You know what I'm saying? I see. It's like, it's like trying to drink out of popping a water balloon. You know, like if you, if you have a water balloon and you pop it and you're trying to drink the water, like some of it is getting into your mouth, but all that water came out of that water balloon. You know what I'm saying? Like it all, it all came out and it's all going somewhere. It's just not necessarily going anywhere useful. I see, I see. <sighs> Did you do the quiz already? Uh, what'd you get on the quiz? Did you get a you get a Honda? Yeah. Okay, cool. I thought I'd get at least one wrong though. Because You're still doing this? You're still doing that. <laughs> okay, for the sun part, I had to look it up. <laughs> it was like the sun part. What about the sun? Oh, just the primary produces energy through fusion because fusion, the, yeah. Yeah, the reason why is because I think because the um, all the hydrogen atoms, it combines to make helium for some reason. I mean, it's because of gravity, but yeah, uh, uh, and and also the heat, right? No, well, the heat comes from fusion. Uh, I mean, it's it's a complicated sort of web of things going back. Which is true of the sun, per, uh, per primarily produces uh, energy through fusion. Yeah. Uh, the the sun is made mostly of hydrogen, and by that I mean like 98% of it. Yeah. And it's just a big cloud of it, and that big cloud has so much mass that the gravity created by that much mass pulling in on that cloud squishes those atoms together so hard that they permanently get stuck together in the form of helium. And when you're sticking two things together, that's called fusion. Whereas like, uh, 
most new well all nuclear reactors that are currently working are fission reactors because their energy comes from breaking things apart rather than putting them together have we made a fusion power plant before no uh we've we've conducted a little bit of fusion here on earth but uh in order, I mean, the way the, the way the sun does it is with gravity, and that requires so much mass that 99% of all the mass in the solar system, including the planets, including the Oort cloud, the asteroid belt, everything, 99% of the mass in our solar system is the sun. So, like, that's how, that's how much, and the Earth is so small that Jupiter is bigger than all the other planets put together. So, so the sun is a hundred times bigger than everything else in the solar system, and the and Jupiter is bigger than every other planet in the solar system. So, like that gives you a, a clue of just how much bigger than the Earth the sun is. So, and our star is not particularly big. So, to to conduct fusion reaction the way the sun does is just impossible anywhere on Earth. So the way they've been able to do it is you. Can can kick off some fusion reaction by putting energy in in the form of heat. So when you do uh, heat things up, they start moving really fast. And sometimes if they're moving really fast and they smash together, they might stick together. Remember, like we've talked about, that's how they do with uh, particle accelerators. They zoom things around and then hit them together and sometimes they stick. So that's... Uh, like they can do stuff like that and they've been able to get it to work for a small amount of time. But the problem with it, one, is that the, uh, the amount of energy it takes to kick off fusion is way more than we get out of it. And uh, fusion reactions occur at such high temperatures and stuff like that, they're not really useful for anything yet. Uh, we do have fusion bombs, which are, uh, you know, terribly destructive, but they don't last very long, you know, and I mean, as, as is obvious by the fact that they're bombs, not power plants, they, uh, they they tend to be pretty destructive. So if you've ever heard of something described as a thermonuclear bomb, that's a, that's a fusion bomb. So no, we've never been able to. That's sort of the holy grail of power generation is uh, stable and uh, long-term fusion here on Earth. Because, uh, I mean, for lack of a better term, it'd be sort of infinite energy. Like, I mean, think of the sun. We only get, we, we get like less than 1% of all the energy that comes out of the sun. I mean, almost all of it gets just shot into space going nowhere. Because the only parts that get used are the parts that actually hit the things that are in the solar system, right? And the sun is so big that, like I said, virtually all of the energy gets shot off into a million different directions, none of which hit the Earth. So, you know, if we could, if we could harness even a small fusion reaction, then, uh, you know, it could be quite a bit of energy. I mean, just, just think about all the... Uh, the energy stored in any amount of matter in that uh, E equals MC squared equation. Like one kilogram of mass has one times three times 10 to the ninth meters per second and then square that whole thing. Like that's an insane amount of energy if, if, you, could, if you could use that. It's just right now we don't have anything close to the capability of maintaining a fusion reaction or harnessing the energy from something that big. I mean, we use fusion reactions to destroy cities. We don't, you know, they're, they're very good at not being contained. Oh, I need to leave that one on. What else, guys? This lighting is not terribly good for my face. Hmm. 
I've been getting pretty good as uh, doing copy on uh, on uh, League of Legends. I have not been playing much uh, uh, Fortnite. It's a uh, it's a lonelier game, you know. At least with um, League of Legends, if you get a if you get a chance to have a a, a non toxic group of people playing, then it can be a uh, it can be a lot of fun. But of course, I mean, right? I get a lot of people. Well, not a lot of people, but I get the occasional like, go play with Barbie dolls. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, what a strange, what a strange thing. <laughs> Delete the game and go play with Barbie dolls. I mean, sick burn. I guess. <laughs> sick burn. I mean. Okay. It, it, it's a game and it's supposed to be fun i mean i'm i'm a bronze level four which not to brag is the lowest you can get <laughs> um but yeah the people i play with none of us are like none of us are on the cusp of going pro so like chill out dude like even in even among like the top players unless unless you're losing money shut up <laughs> you're gonna ruin my kda man like the only people that cares about your KDA is the person that owns it. You, is you. That's that's it. You know, like <laughs> even among my friends who I'm, even among my friends who I am trapped with, and you know, even among my friends who I'm trapped with, they don't care about my KDA. They're like, oh, okay. So what's for lunch? <laughs> Nobody can see you, roommate. We got a chat. Hey, I'm 60% on online classes. Really, I'm kind so, of it's to make people start working on the classes better, for a bit. Yeah. Um, you know what, Nathan? Uh, I mean, I would just keep chugging through at whatever uh, whatever pace you are comfortable with. Uh, one, going back through the stuff isn't going to hurt. But uh, and this is this is you know sort of grown up advice, not really teacher advice. I have a feeling that there's going to be a time where you're just going to get sick of looking at the stuff and like, I'm going to go ahead and call it a plateau. Like I have a feeling you're going to plateau at how much of the ingenuity you're going to be able to stomach on any given day. And if you're ahead when that happens, then you don't suddenly fall behind. <clears throat> so I would say keep working at whatever pace you're comfortable with and stay ahead if you can, because then, you know, if, you know, say you get a cold or something, or you just want to go outside for a couple of days, then it doesn't ruin your, uh, it doesn't ruin your uh, progress. So like, that would be my recommendation. But as long as you're staying up on the, uh, uh, Irma Gerd, dude, as long as you're staying ahead on the quizzes, and you're able to get through those weekly quizzes, uh, without any difficulty, that's, that's all, that's all you need. Is that, is that is that a helpful is that a helpful answer? Weaver, if you're going to use your video, at least point it at your face. Hey. Just woke up. My bad. Okay. Where everybody else at? I mean, you can see there's three other people. Oh, I can't see. Yeah. Yeah, the you are number five, bro. Mm. What y'all talking about? I mean, I'm your physics teacher. What do you think we're talking about? What topic y'all talking about? I mean, we're talking about me blowing up on TikTok. And you just sitting there like a limp fish. Oh, what's my call it? I blow it up on TikTok too. How many how many For followers? Real? How many followers you got? I mean, right now I got like one thousand and five hundred. Really? But my video, I post a video and I got like 20, 20 plus some views and like 4,000 likes. That's adorable. <laughs> like that, man. Where, where everybody else at? I mean, nowhere, dude. Like, the, this isn't required and everybody's, everybody's tripping out. So. Who all in here? <clears throat> um, 
Alec from second period, Philip from fifth period, and Nathan from second period. Nathan who? Don't worry about it. If you don't know them, then don't worry about it. Uh, have you taken the quiz? A Put a shirt on. <laughs> Put a shirt on. I just woke up. I'm trying to get. I mean, that's fine. Then maybe don't include your video. <laughs> there you go. Fixed it. <laughs> Let me know when you put a shirt on and we'll fix it for you. Uh, have you taken the quiz yet, Weaver? Nah. I'm, oh, yeah. I got like a 75. Uh, take it again until you get 100. All right. Uh, these are your only grades until, I mean, gun to my head, I bet these are, I bet this is how the rest of the year goes. <clears throat> That's wonderful. I mean, I it, it is what it is. I mean, we were talking about it before spring break. I mean, truthfully, I mean, and I was just plain ass wrong. I was incorrect. Uh, I thought this would spread a lot more slowly. And in the places where they haven't really acted quickly, it's just gotten out of control. I mean, look at places like New York City, even though they're more densely populated than suburban Houston, but like if, if people don't, stay out of each other's ways and stuff like that, and then thousands of people die. This is way worse than the flu. I was just plain all wrong. I mean, I'm not an epidemiologist. I mean, hell, I was, I mean, not famously because you guys don't know about <laughs> it, but uh, I was vastly incorrect about Hurricane Harvey. I was like, oh, I bet it's gonna be a storm and we'll be fine or whatever. And then we missed two whole weeks of school because, you know, half of Houston washes away. So, I mean, I had a guess, and although now I feel like a jerk for complaining about how I was only going to get two days off during spring break, uh, <laughs> significantly more than that. Um, we play a lot of board games now. Uh, board games are extra good for you guys, okay? Like, I would recommend playing board games. I bought one called Arkham Horror, uh, which is based on the stories by H.P. Lovecraft. And then a Disney-based one called Villainous. And both of those are a whole lot of fun. Um, one, one, you work together as a team. And one, you compete against each other. And it's just a lot of fun. And truthfully, there's just so many times I can get told to kill myself by somebody on League of Legends before I just get tired of it. <laughs> uh, I have no one to play with um, with board games. Because like, there's only three people in the family. Or at least in my family. Hey, uh, okay. So if you're interested in board games, there is a card game version of Arkham Horror that can be played by yourself. I have my own card game I play. <laughs> okay, well. Which I play by myself because apparently I have multiple decks. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, the, and your family speaks English, right? So they yeah. And they read it. Okay, cool. You should get... You should get the card game of Arkham Horror, and um, then you and your then you and your family can play. It's, it's up to two players for the card game version, and up to six for the uh, board game version. And Villainous is actually really fun. That can be for just two uh, two to six people. Nice. You got a shirt on yet, Weaver? Oh yeah, I do. Hey, Mr. Blades. What, Mr. Weaver? The host asked you to start your program. Have you, uh, have you been in the house? Say again? Have you been in the house? Have I been at my house? Yeah, like, have you been staying in? Oh, yeah. I mean, I go to the hardware store occasionally, the grocery store, and nowhere else. <laughs> Cause you, you told us that no, you, I go you know, outside. To, I go outside to exercise. You told us you don't really get sick like that. I told you what? You don't really get sick like that. Oh uh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm relatively sure that I would survive just based on nothing. But uh, I mean, why risk it? And I've got friends and family and stuff that I occasionally see during this whole thing. And I don't want to, uh, you know, have to wonder whether or not I'm the reason they died. So 
Mm-hmm. Been learning how to cook a lot of stuff. Y'all been cooking? Nope. I've only just know how to air fry stuff, and that's it. All right, well, there's a perfectly good time to learn. Chick-fil-A, Whataburger, <laughs> Wayne Stop. Uh, I made Nashville hot chicken last night, you losers. Oh. Right? Yeah. And I, uh, I've made... I made sourdough bread. I've made white bread. I've made naan. I've made curries. Well, I just, I guess the, well, gumbo. I made a, I made a mess load of chicken sausage gumbo. The only food I made was just my own sushi. And Ooh, that's... I made a Filipino chicken thing, uh, a chicken and adobo, <laughs> and with coconut and rice. You. I guess you can consider this cooking, but I don't think so. I just I just know how to make my own sushi and that's it. I mean, that's at very least prep. <laughs> hey. And not for nothing, when you're when you're like trying to get a partner, being able to cook is often one of the most attractive qualities. Uh, when when people talk about having a partner, you know. Because, like, if you're used to eating buttered noodles and stuff, and suddenly you meet someone who can make good barbecue and make all your favorite foods, I mean, yeah, suddenly, suddenly you're a, a whole lot more attractive to that person. Oh, yeah, I've made a whole bunch of pizza. I make my own, I make my own dough because I get to be a total jerk about it if I make my own dough. Oh, you like this pizza, do you? Well, I made it from scratch. Uh, every last bit of it. Somebody pointing in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's your mom. No, <laughs> no, that's impossible. I mean, yes, that's why it's a joke. I know. <laughs> Unless, I'm just kidding. I mean, have you seen her in the last 10 minutes? No, <laughs> she's at work. Or, Not fair. or so she says, I don't know. <laughs> she, uh, she wakes up very early, so I don't really see her because I'm always sleeping. Uh, I mean, that is a good way to uh, eat up some time for sure. Hey, hi, Nathan. Uh, I've been building a lot of stuff around the house. I've built some shelves for the bathroom and I'm going to build a garden box and I'm going to rebuild some parts on my fence. So. Oh. What's oh is the physics unit that we're doing right now is just nuclear reactions uh i mean yeah and we do sort of the uh the, the short version you know as with everything in in uh, physics one in high school we uh we're doing you know the shorthand version how can y'all see our uh progress on the online thing uh philip how do you see how do you see progress on ingenuity does it just tell you like 60 percent through or something no, I'm talking about for the teachers. Like my teacher talking about, she oh. can see us if uh, we're we, like. We can, the but the way I, but the way I, am gonna check it is by the quizzes. Oh. Start. I mean, starting with this week, like you've already seen, starting this week, once a week we will have a quiz every single every single week, and uh, those will be your grades for the rest of the year, essentially. Mm. Wait, so, haven't we haven't we learned nuclear reactions in chemistry? I mean, some of it. I mean, and, and frankly, I don't know. I don't know what they teach you in chemistry. But like, have you all learned about beta beta decay and like beta particles and alpha particles and stuff like that? To some extent, yeah, I've heard of those. Well, before. you know, chemistry is a subset of physics because like things forming compounds is atomic interactions, which is generally considered to be part of physics so physics and chemistry overlap a great deal no so like it's not super surprising that some things you learned in chemistry you'd also learn in physics all right if there's no other questions that are pressing uh i'm gonna do this once a week let's just say wednesday every wednesday at 9 a.m 
uh, we'll do this uh, for for questions and just like a, a check in with uh, with you guys. So, good. It's time. Sound good. So, if there's uh, nothing else going on, I'm gonna I'm gonna take off. Um, everybody, stay safe. Uh, email me questions if you All think right. of them after this whole thing, mm -hmm. and uh, that'll be that. Anything else, guys? No, 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 sir. All right, cool. Well, uh, stay safe, guys, and uh, we'll see you when we get back to school. <laughs> All right. If we go back to school. Bye. All right.